Hey YouTube and welcome back to my channel. This time I'm going to be talking to you guys about a topic that I get asked about a lot and it is working in Italy. The work that I'm going to talk about today is teaching English. I'm not going to talk about other jobs because unless you speak fluent Italian, and or have a degree from an Italian university, it's going to be really difficult for you to find any other type of job in Italy. Basically, anyone who is a mother tongue English speaker, a native English speaker, can teach English in Italy. I have friends from Africa, African countries, that are fluent in English, it's their native tongue, and they've been able to find jobs teaching English in Italy as well. This applies to everybody that is an English speaking person. I did not come to Italy to work, I came to Italy to study. I study university here and another question that I get asked a lot is can you work on an Italian student visa? Yes you can, you can work up to 20 hours a week and I think it's like a thousand hours a year or something like that. I don't know the exact number. And also, as long as you don't make over, I think it's 4,800 something euros, you actually don't have to pay taxes either. Okay, so I've been teaching English in Italy for about a year and a half now, and I'm going to go into the different types of ways you can teach English, the different types of contracts, and all of that stuff. So when I first started teaching English in Italy, I actually wasn't an English teacher, I was an English tutor, and I was just tutoring young children in English, help going over to their house, helping them with their home homework and then their parents would pay me in cash, whatever. I would charge around 20 euros an hour is the normal rate for an English speaking person. You can charge lower if you feel like you don't have enough experience, but and you can charge higher. If you have an actual degree in teaching English, you can get away with charging 30 euros an hour for an English lesson. After a couple months of that, after I started building up my experience, I had the opportunity to apply to work for an actual school. I did have experience teaching kids. Um, I did some internships back in the States as a teacher's aide, and I worked as a camp counselor, so I had experience with kids. I know it's totally random, but it did. Plus, I had the added experience of all the private lessons I was doing, so I started working for this school. The school was private. There are two types of schools in Italy, obviously. You can work at a public school and a private English school. Both have um, perks and drawbacks. If you teach in a public English school, Basically, you're gonna the perks of that are gonna be you're gonna have secure pay and you're gonna have job security. You will make you won't be rich, but you'll make enough money to live comfortably, maybe like around a thousand euros a month or something around there. A thousand euros a month, I think, would be the average pay. The drawback to that is obviously you're gonna have more requirements if you want to teach in actual Italian public school. You'll probably have to get the TEFL certificate, or maybe they'll want you to have. Uh, an English degree, usually they don't, the TEFL certificate is fine. Basically what the TEFL certificate is, is just a certificate you get that says you can teach English and you can even do it online. Honestly, I would recommend that if you're coming to Italy and it is your goal to teach English like as a serious profession and not something to just get by until you find something better, I would say work in a public school. Private schools, like the one that I worked at, I don't work there anymore, um, the perks to a private school is that you make more by the hour, like, I think, and, and that's pretty much it as the perks to a per working in a private school. I did not have a very good experience working at the school that I was working at. Um, it was actually a corporation. It was a corp an English school that was at also a corporation, so that should have been my first sign. And I had started working for them, started training in March of last year, finished the training around June, and started officially working in June. The job itself was really cool and really easy because, like I said, apart from the English teaching experience I had and the internships and stuff that I had done in the States, I didn't need any other um, cert requirements. So that's the that's a perk of private schools. Private schools will hire anyone that speaks English. So I started working there. I didn't have to prepare anything for the classes because they had already had all the material set up for you, which is another perk to teaching at a private school. You don't have to make your own lesson plans and do all of that like you would if you were an actual public school teacher. And the hours were more or less flexible. When I started working for them, I was working under what is called um, a contrato occasionale, 
and now we're going to get into talking about different types of work contracts in Italy. To work in Italy, you have to have a contract. Um, well, you don't have to, but you should if you want to get paid. And there's a few different types. You have the contratto indeterminato, which is what everybody wants. It's basically a contract for the rest of your life, and you work for a company and they have a fixed amount they have to pay you, and you are set. A lot of like older Italians have this kind of contract. These kinds of contracts are like impossible to get nowadays. There's also the contratto subordinato, which is basically a regular employee contract. You are the employee of this company and they will pay all of your taxes for you aside from like any extra tax you have to pay at the end of filing your income tax. Then you have like a con like a part-time contract with a partita IVA. Well, no, wait. Then you had the contracto occasionale, like the one that I did, and basically you pay half of the taxes and the company pays the other half of your taxes. It doesn't usually come with a set amount of hours every month. It's really um, flexible and um, you don't personally have to pay any extra taxes at the end until you reach 5,000 euros. Basically, if you work in, on, as a subordinate, subordinate contract, you don't have to pay your taxes, like you don't have to do anything special, the company does everything for you. And if you work at the, if you were, were working on the contract occasionally, like me, you didn't have to pay anything up until 5,000 euros. And so, yeah, this year, I guess they abolished that contract, the contracto occasionale, and so everybody that's not a subordinate worker, an actual employee, at a school or working at a company has to open what is called a partita IVA. Now what a partita IVA basically is, is a tax account for businesses. If you open a partita IVA, you are saying that your skill of teaching English is a business and you are a freelance worker employing yourself, you're self-employed. With a partita IVA, you are going to be paying somewhere around 50% of your income in taxes because regardless of the average income has different tax bracket, the lowest being 22 I believe, and then you also have to pay a fee to maintain the partita IVA, and I think it, there's, I don't think there's a fee to open the partita IVA, but there's a fee to close the partita IVA. Basically in short, a partita IVA is very complicated and you don't want to have one, basically. Um, I would not suggest that at all. So yeah, I was working for this school under the contratto occasionale, and one thing that I didn't know about working in Italy is that you get paid after 60 days, every uh, after 60 days of working. So say you work in June, you're going to get that money in August. In the, yeah, in August. Nope, September. Because you the pay you work in June, then July goes by, that's 30 days. August goes by, that's 30 days. Now you should get paid in August. I don't know, y'all. You get paid 60 days after you send in your invoice, all right? Which was annoying. So I worked for this company from in June. The whole summer I worked until August, and then September came along and they still hadn't paid me. Uh, it went by like, they were like five days late and we were about to start the new school year and I was the only person working at this, in, in my position, the only person that had training or experience to be teaching English to children at that school. And they still hadn't paid me. So I had to call them and tell, they, no, they called me and asked me if I was coming into work and I was like, no, nah, not until you pay me, I'm not. And so finally after that, after I said something, they paid me. This went on, I continued working for them until December, and I didn't put all of my eggs into that basket because, like I said, if you don't, unless you work on a contracto subordinato or a contracto indeterminato, you don't really have any job security. If you're working for an actual public school, you're basically working for the Italian government and you will have a contracto subordinato, to my knowledge. And so you don't have to worry about any of this, but if you work at a private English school, you do have to worry about this. If you have a partita IVA, or if you, well, you can't, if you were working on a contratto occasionale, you have zero security. You don't know how many hours a week you're gonna be getting. You don't know anything, basically. At this job that I was working at, they told you the day before your hours for the next day. So I couldn't even, you can't even plan. So then we get to December, and like a week before, we we're all supposed to go on our Christmas break and everything, these people tell me that they had, a, they abolished the 
the contrato occasionale. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh great, since there's no contrato occasionale, you guys are gonna give me an actual contrato subordinato, right? Because I work at this school, I'm an English teacher, it's not like you can just replace me with any old person from on the street. I was wrong. They wanted me to open a partita IVA and work as a freelancer. I mean, I was working as a freelance before, but like I said, in this freelance position, you're paying way more in taxes. And so I'm only working there five hours a week. This is a part-time job for a college student. I was making maybe, they, the pay was 17 euros an hour, minus the taxes, it was like 13 euros an hour. Multiply that by five. I mean, I'm not gonna do the math in my head, but it wasn't that much. I was making less than 500 euros a month. And so now I would be making the same amount of money, but paying even more in taxes. So I'd be making way less than 500 years a month. As you, anybody that lives in Milan knows that what the heck can you do on less than 500 euros a month. This is why I don't suggest anybody open a partita IVA unless, first of all, you're making a lot of money at a job that has a lot of security and you have a lot of time to do it. As a student, absolutely not. Do not open a partita IVA. Just tutor kids and kids stay under the 5,000 euro limit. So yeah, so basically I told them that was not gonna happen and I thought it was really unethical that they were doing this, like hiring American teachers, British teachers, and not giving them contracts. They charge something like 100 euros a lesson for every Italian. That's what these private schools do. They charge a lot of money and then they pay their teachers less than 17% of what they're charging, and then to force the teacher to have to pay all of their taxes on, on their own, it just seemed really sketchy to me. It was like this company was just trying to make as much money as they could without paying taxes. I said, that's a wrap, I'm not doing that anymore, and now I work for, I just do private lessons. I do private lessons, I babysit, I out pair, I do stuff like that. It makes more honestly it's more um more secure in a sense it's not secure in the sense that people can always say you're not working on a contract and you're just giving private lessons you never know when that person is going to cancel on you i try to always have a lot of clients going in and out because you never know when somebody's going to call you an hour before the lesson and say hey i can't come if you want to come to italy to find a job and you don't have a work visa ahead of time what or a student visa or any way to enter the country what i would say is as least as an american you can come to italy up to three months without a student visa or any type of visa you can just come on your passport so what i would suggest is come get get your tefl certificate before you come then come on the tourist uh as a tourist for three months and you can then after during that time search around and I'm sure within three months if you have a TEFL certificate you would find something and also no Italian like I said most Americans most English speaking foreigners that I know are English teachers I think that if you want to teach English in Italy you should also have some sort type of passion for it don't come and say you're going to be an English teacher if you know that you don't like working with people if you don't know you don't like working with children I wouldn't suggest doing that because you're just going to be a shitty teacher and have a shitty experience you can find all of the tax info on the Italian revenue site that's where I found my information you're exempt from paying taxes, like I said, if you are under the 4,800 euro mark. Don't, if you make over that, then I think the first bracket is like 22%, then the second bracket is like 27%, and the third bracket is something like 60%. It goes all the way up to 60% in taxes. If you want to pay Italian, well, if you want to, if you need to pay Italian taxes, you have to hire an accountant, a commercialista, to do it for you because it's really, really complicated. It's not like America where you can just mail a check to the IRS. I mean, it's not that easy in America either, but it's way, way more complicated here and it's really unlikely that you're going to pay your taxes on your own, so it would be hard to find info on the internet in English on how to do that. Be forewarned that it, when it comes time for you to pay Italian taxes, be ready to pay it 400 euros or something for a commercialista. And um, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's not, it's not impossible to find work as a native speaker. As a matter of fact, we're very lucky that we have the option to fall back on English teaching. I mean, if 
everything goes wrong for me and I can't find any other work, I could always work at, as an, at an English school. I have the experience and the qualifications now to do so. Um, or at a public school, I would work at a public school. Yeah, I think that's basically it. If you guys have any further questions, you can ask them in the comments below. But yeah, teaching English in Italy is pretty chill. There's a really high demand and I mean, I started teaching English with no experience in teaching English. I didn't know all the grammatical knowledge about our language, but you learn along the way. In After a while, you'll be able to plan your own lessons, you'll come up with your own like method, your curriculum, and before you know it, you'll be an English teacher. And so yeah, that's my that's my take on working in Italy and my advice and what not my knowledge. Uh, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Mwah.